Yo, what is up, dude? So I am here with this, the Donner Arena 2000 Amp Modeling Multi Effects Processor. I have a little overhead cam going here, so I uh, thought we would utilize that to get our overhead shots. Um, before we get started, I'll give you a little bit of the specs. I printed out the entire this is the entire, um, and it's one-sided, not two-sided, the entire manual. Um, it's actually a pretty simple unit to wear. It's very powerful, but it seems to be pretty easy to use. Um, I'm just going to go over just a couple of specs real quick. It uses their virtual modeling technology. It's got 150 presets, 50 banks times three presets. Um, uh, that's what the three switches are, right? So the banks and the presets. And then it's got uh, I, uh, 80... Uh, high-res amp models. It's got 50 uh, built-in cab IRs. It's got 50 slots for your own user cab um, IRs, if you want to use your own IRs. The IR length is actually pretty long, 23.2 milliseconds. So if you have a really long, you know, impulse response sample, you can actually load it in and it won't be cut off, won't be truncated. Uh, total of 278 effects. Movable effects blocks which is pretty cool. I didn't think a unit like this would actually have that. Uh, that's usually a more advanced feature. This is, I think, 279 So, you know, well under 300 bucks. And um, usually the blocks are sort of set in stone when you get to that price point. So movable blocks is, I think, a very advanced feature. Um, it's got a, an expression pe pedal built in, plus an external expression pedal can be uh, attached to it. And let me see. You've got... Um, built-in drum machine with 40 patterns you've got a 60 second looper that can be reversed uh, double speed or half speed and uh, it has um, a USB-C which can be used for um, recording if you want to do uh, a direct to computer recording you know digitally um, and it also can send both the, a completely dry signal and the affected signal simultaneously to different tracks. At least that's what it says here. Um, MIDI in for external switching devices. If you had some larger switcher you wanted to use. Um, it's got um, a computer software that you can download that will help you do tone editing. You can do backups of your presets and you can do firmware updates. And there is a mobile app if you want to do that Bluetooth. But I don't know if the mobile app can do firmware updates as well. Uh, I, that might be computer only. I'm not sure. Um, and there you go. Uh, and yeah, and then it just gets right into it. Yeah, right, right there. So let me do this. Let's uh, let's open it up. We'll, we'll switch to the overhead cam so you can look at it here. That is the box right there. Okay. Arena 2000, and if we, let me see if I can, yeah, like a slide, give you an idea of like how how big the the box is, and all right, put it up. There's your internal stuff. It's like we have some adapters for different areas, right? Different. Uh, um, you know, power sources. It comes preset with the one for the US. So you can see right there. I think if I get a little too close here, I'm I'm uh, I'm getting out of focus. So I'm trying to kind of move away a little bit. <laughs> and then it comes with a, a USB uh, C cable, as you can see right there. Right here, there's the power supply, and then we have the unit. Oh, it's it's heavy. Oh yeah. Oh, it's all metal. Yeah, again, under 300 bucks. And we have the the user manual. As you can see right there. Let me just move the box out of here.
Oh yeah. Right there. Yeah. I'll switch it around like this. And there she is. There is the Donner. Tilt it up. I think you'll be able to see it better once I uh once it's on and it's lit up. See it right there. Oh yeah, no, it's got oh wow, it's it's got a little bit of uh you know um a little strength to it, you know. It's uh, pretty good. And then it looks to me like there's a uh like a plastic yep, it's on camera. And we're done. All right. <laughs> Once you start, you can't stop. You know how that goes. Oh, yeah. There you go. Probably should have left it on. Wouldn't be so many fingerprints on it. Anyway, uh, let me plug it in. There you are. Let me plug it in. And um, I could actually really quickly show you the back here. Um, just like that you can see we have xlrs we've got uh, a ground lift right there we've got a usb-c the headphone jack an auxiliary in expression two right so you have a second expression pedal unbalanced outs this a single one would go out to a like an amp a stereo you could send out wherever you want um, and there is your input Get your power switch and you have a MIDI in if you want to use an external MIDI controller. A whole bunch of features. And how I'm going to run it is I'm going to run the balanced outs um, into my um, uh, interface and we'll hear it directly. Uh, like, like in a studio situation. Uh, when you run that, when you, it, it'll run the cab IRs. If you, um, you know, if you switch it to like the, you know, like an external cab, um, like you're running it through an amp and you already have a cab speaker, you have to turn the internal um, cab off or else you have double cabs and that takes away a lot of the, that muffles the sound quite a bit because you'll literally have two cab devices running. The simulated cab, you know, the cab IR or uh, it, plus the real cab, so... This, when you're running a cab IR, it assumes you have um, headphones or some sort of full-range speaker, you know, to be able to play it. All right. Well, there it is. Okay. Let me, um, this is going to take a couple of minutes. I actually have to get this hooked up to my system and a guitar to plug into it. I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> All right, we are back. Um, that's all the Arena uh, the 2000. I'm running directly into the Arena. The Arena is going directly into my interface, and I'm recording that directly. So um, there's no microphones involved. I think that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's sounding good. So just go over the, the top of this really quickly. Um, you'll see that the A in the arena is lit up. That means that these buttons will work. You see that? Okay. Back home again. If I hit these two last ones down here, you'll see that the A goes out. 
Now it's dim. Um, that means that these are locked now, right? All these little touch things are, right? They're all locked. And, 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 that's, and I was like, why would they do that? But it's actually a really smart idea because when you're down here and you're touching it with your toe or whatever, you don't want to accidentally turn things on or off. You have to be able to lock the touch part of the interface. Now, it's not a touch screen, but it is got touch areas for each of the individual effects. And even though these effects are lined up like this, you can actually change the order of the effects as we had mentioned earlier. Um, but if you want to edit it in any way, you've ha you got to hit these two simultaneously at the bottom, and you see it has got that little lock down there. If we hit them, oh, see, see that? The A lit up. When the A is lit, that means the touch interface is now live. And I can hit, you know, system, and the system menu will come up, and the drums and the drum menu will come up, right? And uh, I should be able to Hit the expression pedal, you know, tuner, the looper, uh, external control, and of course the output. And right now I'm going out to the um, XLR and I have the internal cab turned off. I think I had mentioned that earlier. If you're, if you're doing the line out and you're going directly out to um, you know, an amp, you'd probably want to turn the cab off because you know, then you're running double cabs and that's, that's not a good idea. It'll, it'll sound muffled, right? Too many, too many cabs. So, um, let's go back to the home button and you'll notice up next to the home, there's a little reverse button. Anyone who has Android knows that it just sends you back to the prior screen. So I didn't want to go here. Let me just go back one. Uh, you can always go back with the back button. So, you know, maybe I, uh, Hit something on here, you know. Can I just hit back? And I just go, and it goes back. <laughs> right? So, I think I just turned that on. Let me go back home again. These are our patches. To edit the patch, press it, and you'll see it turns blue. And now when I turn this knob, it doesn't move between patches, it moves between items. And I can click on it and move its location. See, I'm moving the cab. I don't know why you'd want to put the cab at the front, but you could. <laughs> and again, the amp. I can move the amp in front of the drive and so forth. Really what you want to do is you say, you know, do I want the drive here or would I rather have the drive in front of that, right? Like that. <laughs> So, all right, and there we go. Okay, so a little bit on changing those around again. When it's blue, and you see that little arrow, see a little move in there? Click it, that sort of grabs whatever it's on, picks it up, and you can move it to another slot. All right, hit it again. And now you're free to go grab something else. Um, hit the home button. And now you're back to when you move the knob, you move to the next patch. Right? Not to the next uh, item on the chain. Let's just hit a couple of these presets. Um. Go one more here.
different volume levels for different patches. We'll just rip through a bunch. Not a big fuzz guy, but... And that's a little phaser on that. Or is that a flanger? Can I hit FXB? Yeah, it's a flanger. If I hit this, yeah. Intelligent gate. It's telling me the cab. It's telling me the amp. Now I can go here and you know, work the bass, work the treble, work the volume, work the gain. Go back to the flanger. And I think I can, if I hit this, can I turn it off? I can. See, when you tap the big one, it goes into edit mode. I hit it again. And I don't... Oh, can I hit it? Oh. I like the stereo frame jet. Go back home again. We'll just go through some more presets here. I appreciate the hot solo, but I feel like it feel like it needs a delay. There you go. Tremolo delay. Kind of a crunchy lo-fi. I think I like the... I like the ping pong. Uh, now, just know that what you're hearing now is what you would hear if you plugged headphones into it. Again, I'm running directly out with nothing in between. In fact, the claim of fame to these interfaces are the cleanest, most transparent preamps. So unlike running it into pretty much any amp on the planet, which by definition its preamp would, would um, add some sort of color to the tone. Uh, the only way you could get around it would be going into the effects loop return, you know, something like that, direct power amp in. But that can be risky. You'd have to make sure you really have your, you know, your output on the set correctly. You could be blasting like full wattage of your amp. Um, so I, again, I, the all metal, and I tell you, so far I've been very impressed just with its build quality. Um, let's just uh, keep going here. Let's go back home. We'll move through a few of these. Yeah, it sounded pretty good. Not much of a, not much of a punk player. 
Again, put a little bit of reverb on. Maybe a little delay. To that FXB, like this is a classic case where you would want to go here. If FXB is, a, is an overdrive, you know, I might be inclined to lift that up and, and, you know, put it in front of the amp. It'd be all the way up front. That already sounds better to me. You know, putting a, an overdrive so far in the chain. Just, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, overdrives, things that cause distortion should be at the front of the chain. Boosts, gains, distortions, overdrives, all that stuff. Um, and things that are like, um, you know, modulators, delays, uh, you know, anything that's like a phaser or a flanger or stuff, that should be after the amp or even after the cab, right? Let's go back home again. I'm going to hit the button again. Oop. Can I get out of this? Oh, there we go. Hit. When, it, when in doubt, just hit that home button. We'll move forward. Soft. <laughs> Get a reverb? Maybe not that reverb. Oh, that's not bad. Little. Oh, I hear it like a mod. Do we have like a. Let's turn the mix up a little bit. That sounds pretty good, man. Nice. Um, okay. What about delay? go to uh back to delay bring that level up and we'll bring the time way up analog delay is we'll bring the see my other delays I'm telling you, I'm really digging that. All right, let's go home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get lost in this. Let's just go home. Oh, big solo. All right, that's volume. If I hit it and. Turn it on. Uh, 
I feel like that's a, a, a uh, pitch shifter. No, it's, it's controlling the delay. Right, almost no delay time, like a slap back. Start to turn it up, We're getting more delay. Turn it all the way up, and now we're getting the full delay. I'm telling you, so far it has been impressive. All right. <laughs> FXA analog chorus, interesting. Oh, that's the overall volume. Again, that's where the sort of the lock comes in. Because if we hit that drive. But you hear it, I almost would want to go um, here and uh, move that drive in front of that. That sounds more correct to me, so to speak. All right, let's go back home. We'll go to... Really long. It's got some interesting... Like, delay. trying to purposely play it wrong <laughs> to not get a hit with a copyright it's hard you're so used to playing it right it's like I'm, <laughs> you're trying to mess it up and you can't That is. Mm -hmm. 
Now, where is the... Is it FXB? Yeah, tremolo. out the, the volume is it like really gets you down you want to mix in a lot more of the much more subtle effect I, I tell you so far I'm, I am extremely impressed Again, I just feel like the. Let me see. What is this effect B? A filter, a high pass filter. Um. Yeah, right, right. What about a? Let's go to that delay. Bring the level down. I think I'm internally, did you hear that? I think I'm internally overdriving a bit. Which you can do, right? You can get this stuff to like overdrive on itself. Let's go to that drive and bring that gain down a hair. No wonder, it's a heavy metal. Groove maker? Oh yeah, yeah, right. So like a like a reverse. Take a wham wham. Anyway, we can go through a whole bunch of these. I think you get the idea. Oh, that's nice. Oh man. I don't know the riff. It's a little... Is it a little noisy? Maybe 
Maybe not. What is it? Uh... Little Donald Duckish. Oh, I see right. It's got the it's got a little delay and reverb. Again, I'll just get like trapped. like a lo-fi. Quickly. <laughs> All right. So many. I mean, how many does this go up to? 22. Ooh, that 800 lead. Um, let's go to the amp. Gain is all the way up. Let's bring that treble and that volume up here. Let's drive a tube. You know, that better. Can't go wrong with a tube nine. All right. Again, we can just keep going through all these uh, different uh, sounds here. Let's go. How far up does it go? 30s, 40s. All right. 50s. Uh, and back to one again. So 50. That's right. And then there's three per... They said that, right? For a total of 150. Right? 48C, 48B, 48A. Right? 48C. Uh, it has a tuner. Just press the tuner. You notice it kills the kills the tone. The you know the the output, and you can check it. Yeah, it looks in tune. Oh, it's a tiny bit flat. 
Oh, well, let me get this right. I want to put it out of tune, trying to get it in tune. Just a hair down here. All right. Uh, you could go to the drums. What starts the drums? Is it this? Oh, yeah. Um, where is my tempo? If I hit... Oh, right there. back to my tone. Let me just bring this delay feedback way down. We got up. Bring those drum levels up so I can hear it. I mean, it's a great practice tool, you know, because you're getting, you know, way more than just, um, you know, bring that tempo down to here. We're having fun. Oh, it's like a halftime. Clicking on it. A little busy. Let's try one. Again, a little busy. We try.
Well, that can get addicting. <laughs> oh, yeah, like a swing. having an episode <laughs> all right I, I'm gonna be I am like totally addicted to this now poison wait is that poison poison Ah, call back. Call back to early 90s. Maybe late 80s. Oh, yeah, right. Let's try um, a loop with it, can we? Uh, how do we start the loop here? Control A is play dub. Control B is stop and clear. They're telling you right there what it is. And control C turns the effects on and off, right? I gotta, I gotta wait till this comes around again. In forward, no one. Okay, so hold on. I wonder if I can truncate that because I obviously I screwed up the head. Again, I, I, I kind of screwed up the, the loop. It you know, worked better if I you know, didn't have to use my hand, but you kind of get the um, you kind of get the idea. All right, let me get to the. Now how do I stop it all? I turn that off. Can I hit the? Oh no no no! Like that. Right there. B B is the stop. Okay, we're figuring it out. All right, let's go back to the home button. And so we covered uh, output, right? We covered control, right? This is what's controlling what, um, you know, for foot switches. And uh, we covered the looper. We covered the tuner. Uh, this is the ex the expression pedal. I, God, I, I, I keep on wanting to hit that. <laughs> it's not a touchscreen. Uh, we covered the drums. Oh. We can... Uh, We'll turn that off. We'll go to the system. Uh, now the system, I think you can go here. Right, right. So it's telling you how you can send the, the audio out. Dry or effect. Right. I can hit back and go to the back screen. Boy, I like that. FX trails. Do you want them? Uh, is it here? One of these will hit it. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, you're just sort of clicking around. It's a pretty easy interface, you know. Again, it's a it's a 12-page manual, so uh, pretty simple. Um, let's go to uh, what else is on uh, system. 
Oh, uh, the screen brightness and contrast. We'll leave that up. Um, MIDI. Okay, PC or continue. Right. Uh, I think that's continuous control. Right. Or uh, I forget if that's momentary control. I forget the the PC CC, but CC is usually continuous control. Uh, I'd have to look in to see. But again, it's like just so wide open. You can do a Bluetooth and system information. I, I'll bet I'll see if there's a, a firmware update for it. Uh, you do that through the, and then there's a full system reset. Wow. Uh, and then the store button is so you can come up with the name and store your patch. And you hit store and it stores it. All right. Wow. I, I got to say, I'm a, I'm a little uh, blown away with the quality of this thing. All metal, you know. Uh, so far, I've been very impressed with it. Yep. I, mean, I think that sounds great. <laughs> Let's try... Uh, my favorite, the ping pong. Let me just uh, make sure all my levels are good. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. What else can I show you about it? You know, it's it's pretty awesome. I think I liked uh, this Copen sound. Let's try this, this FXB. What else do we have? Oh yeah. Again, you gotta be copyright, you gotta be careful. Do I have this? Uh, I thought so. Playing chords, no songs here, just chords. Anyway, let me just go back to my little uh, my little page here and see what I'm if I'm missing anything. I don't think so. Yeah, so there's two different modes. Um. Oh, right, right. You can choose the bank. Bank up or bank down, right? Oh, see this? By hitting two at the same time, see how I'm moving through the banks? That's bank down, 35, 36, 30. That's bank up. These two are bank up. These two are bank down. And then once you're there, you just hit, you hit the sound you want, right? So, right? Again, hit it. Now I'm at... The moon bank. I can go back up to the fish tank bank. <laughs> I can go up to the JP bank. Back down to the fish tank bank. It's actually pretty... It's pretty simple. Now, how did I get to that? How do we get to the... the I'm missing one of these, though. And that is the difference between control mode... I want to make sure I get this right. Um, the control mode in the preset switching mode. Right now, when it's white, we're in preset switching mode, as we just saw. The default is preset switching mode. Right, right. Right, right. Words. 
Words and letters, letters and words. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, press foot switch, then press foot switch again to enter control mode. Oh, it just turned green. Okay, all right, so. All right, so that's a tuner. So what do they have it? Do they have it um, assigned? Oh, it's okay. All right, so you can assign it to things. This enters and exits the preset mode, and this turns something on or off. It's turning the drive on and off. See? See that? This, this, now it's the drive is on and off, and now this is the tuner on and off. I got it. Hit this again, and now we're back in our bank mode. Hold that down again. This is turning, this is assigned to turn something on and off, which is the delay. Or, oh, okay, so you can assign it to whatever you want. The other one was assigned to a tuner. This is assigned to delay and reverb. See that? Oh, that's pretty cool. So if I hit control, it's telling me what it's assigned to. Right? This is enter and exit into control mode. This is delay. This is reverb. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And now if I go to JP Clean, I'm on my third one. Because this is the act of light. I hit that again. I go to green mode. Got it. Got, actually, that's pretty simple. Right? And then you hit this, and it's going to do something. It's turning FXB on and off. And I could hit B, and it's going to do something. It's good tuner mode, right? So if you're not going to turn an effect on and off, you can assign it to the tuner. Brilliant. Just uh, really, really good stuff. All right. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I've missed before we call it a video. Uh, expression pedal is a wah tone. Oh, I, I see. So if I hit expression, and it's, it wants to know expression one what the function is if it if it's fxb okay and i choose that delay reverb is there a wah no is there one just called wah no volume delay i wonder if it's fxb and then this can be a wah Unless it's that um, filter. I'm literally looking for wah. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. But you know what? I got to think it's in there. So, which one did I say it was closest to filter? All right. No, that's not it. I think it's already been assigned to reverb. All right, so let's go home and... That might be it. There it is. So if I go to expression pedal... And I say expression pedal one, and I say function, here it is, wah, live 35. All right. I knew we'd dig that wah pedal out of there. And talks about the looper, talks about the drum machine, talks about the tuner. We've already done that. Locked, unlocked mode. We've already done that. Um, the editor software, I'm not really set up to do right now, but um, that's a good way. Again, I, I strongly urge you to do firmware updates because uh, they generally fix bugs and open functionality. Uh, it also works as a USB port. Um, and that seems to be about it. Let me just give you some final specs on this, and we'll call it a video. Uh, the sample rate is actually 44.1 kilohertz, the same as a compact disc. But unlike a compact disc, the ADA converters are actually 24-bit, not 16-bit. 
that is in a uh, that's an incredible increase in dynamic range over what a compact disc can do. Think about that. This ex this the quality of this exceeds the level of a compact disc, which is just mind blowing. Um, humans here up to about 20, 21 k. So to make sure that we were way beyond it, they doubled the rate and brought it up like they brought it up to about 22 K and then they double that to 44. There's a whole math reason why it's got to be doubled, but let's just, for the purposes of this video, it's so that you maximize that time, you know, that, that frequency response. I probably can't hear even close to that high, <laughs> but you know, it's just, it's stunning to me that they have a 44.1 K bit rate and a 24 bit, not a 16 bit, a 24 bit um, AD to DA, you know, uh, converter, you know, the DAC. Uh, 150 presets, max looper time is 60 seconds. The display is a three and a half inch TFT 320 by 480. Eh, pretty good res. Um, inputs uh, giving you the impedance, uh, output levels headphone outs uh, it weighs 1.3 kilograms and it's got a phone output balanced output uh, auxiliary input and of course the power on the back it's just give me all the, the stuff on the back and there you go man what a I, again just I, I I think it's kind of a loan at its price point, I think there might be one other product out there uh, that's around the same money. Uh, it might be over three hundred. I'm not sure it's quite as affordable as this at two seventy nine. But um, oh man, they're just uh, just amazing. I mean, you know, a unit like this. You know, when I was a, not a kid, when I was like in college. You know, probably would have been like four thousand dollars. <laughs> like, you know, it's like just it's amazing just how far this has come. Uh, you know, back then you were you you could spend sixteen hundred and get you know maybe uh, eight preset effects at a time, and uh, you couldn't you know stray away from you know whatever those effects were at those effects blocks. It's just uh, mind blowing just how far it's come. Anyway. I will leave links in the description um, for the unit. Um, there's one other thing I did want to mention before we call it a video. Uh, Donner partnered with Berkeley College of Music, and um, the faculty actually played a few Donner guitars, and they had the Arena 2000, and they did like a, a music in, uh, symposium with some Berkeley professors and uh, Donner equipment. And uh, I'll leave a link to that down in the description if you wanted to check that out as well. Um, I think they were, Donna was really proud of their, their work with, um, with Berkeley. All right, dudes, there you have it. As always, thanks so much for hanging out and rock on.